Oh, what's up, guys? Movies of the Jizz back at, and in this video, we are going to be revealing the 10 best builds of the new 11.7 patch and the champions you have to abuse these on. Now, as we all know, Season 11 is literally League of Items. If your champion doesn't synergize well with the new Mythics, new and updated Legendaries, and the rest of the shop, chances are you're going to be more upset than Azir mains at the moment. So, to avoid being upset, I've got two solutions for you. Stick around for the whole video and check out the Game Week website. You see, unlike some sites, guys, we don't recycle our YouTube material and make you pay for it. No, by signing up, you get exclusive access access to fresh daily up to meta content that is guaranteed to help you climb and improve and who doesn't want that so for more jizz and more lp get clicking links as always in the description and comment section all right guys let's get into it before pro guards copy another one of our videos and starting off the countdown is a build many of you are familiar with maybe you've been abusing it or maybe you've been on the receiving end regardless of what end you've been on there is no doubt that stride breaker and steric's gauge is still right up there with the best of them the main advocates of this combo you know darius garan nah nocturne have been the best champions in the game since season 11 started and why well, because Stridebreaker's active could be the most broken in League history. The fact it teleports you from one side of your screen to another and slows enemy champions while speeding you up, like it just sounds ludicrous. And for these champions, this addresses their biggest weakness, getting kited. So if you're an AD carrier or a mage trying to keep a Darius, a Garen, an Nocturne, and Nara at arm's length, guess what? A heck of a lot harder to do. The gauge has also been a top performer this season and this patch is no different. The bug fix in 11.6 that fixed the stacking problem in gauge's bloodline passive is a biggie. More stacks means more survivability and it allows for you to be even more Noxious in teamfights, in the sense that you can senselessly headbutt the enemy team and get away with it. So, Stridebreaker and Steris Gauge, this combo is still top tier. Now, just ahead of the SB and SG is another staple item combination of Season 11, guys, that is still prevailing across all elos. So, if you're playing a marksman whose abilities hit hard, then Gale Force and the Collector is your bread and butter. On champions like Graves, Kaisa, Misfortune, Jin, with these two items, you get so much. You get mobility with Gale Force and decent damage so you can execute enemies or escape difficult situations, and you get lethality and therefore better damage and execute with the collector. In this meta, guys, it is certainly harder to stay alive as an AD carry, no doubt. But that's the thing. It's more about who can kill the other the fastest, so stacking damage is key. So when that enemy Zed or Akali or Katarina or Camille jumps onto you, well, maybe not Camille because she is beyond busted, but yeah, with the others, you have a legit chance of killing them before they kill you. It's almost like your role as an AD carry or marksman changes into a one-shotter or an assassin, and this build fills that purpose. So keep investing in Gale Force and the collector in 11.7, guys. Now, we've had some wacky builds on this series before, and maybe none is on all orthodox as this next one. Now the champion who takes advantage of this build for free LP at the moment guys is Bard, and this is the main reason the Wandering Caretaker has one of the highest win rates for another patch. So your first item rush is Locket of the Iron Solari and you are following this up with a Cosmic Drive, and yes you heard the jizz correctly, a Cosmic Drive. Now I love a bit of Bard and the rumours are true, this build carries, simple as that. Now Locket gives you the tankiness you need to withstand the damage thrown at you and your AD carry in the early game, because let's be real guys, you are going to see the enemy mid laner more than your own mid laner, and Cosmic Drive gives you a ton of ability haste and movement speed. Two crucial stats on Bard Bard. Now you might be wondering, you see what I did there? Don't you have to have 160 AP for Cosmic Drive's passive to work? Well to those of you astute enough to ask, you're absolutely right and this is why you take Eyeball Collection in your runes and buy Dark Seal early on. When Eyeball Collection is stacked, you get to that magic 160 AP without having to buy an AP item. How good. So test this out on Bard guys, it's got as much carry potential as any other build. Now up next we have more of an item rush than a build but we can't hide from the fact that rushing this item gives you a huge first item spike that allows you to pop off. So if you're playing Katarina, K or Teemo, Nash's Tooth is their spike. Now why is it so good? Well these champions I mentioned guys all have on hit. And what does the Tooth have? On hit, that's right, but it's passive. Otherwise you're just spending 3000 gold on AP and attack speed, which is not really worth. So the fact Katarina has on hit in her ultimate, Kale has on hit in her E, and Teemo has on hit in his E, this makes Nash's hella worth. And let's not forget you're getting 100 AP, that's a big chunk. So if you're on one of these on hitters in 11.7 guys, invest in the Tooth. Now if you don't play an on hitter, I've got an even better build for you at number 6 on our 11.7 builds countdown, and make sure you on hit the like button if you want this little series to continue. Now this item combination is behind the dominance of Elise and Diana in solo queue this season. So you're starting with Night Harvester, and then building Lich Bane. You see, ever since Riot put more AP into the NH back in 11.1, Diana and Elise in particular have been sending it. This of course means your abilities are dealing more damage, and with the burst from Night Harvester's passive in Lich Bane, you can one shot anyone on the rift. It's also very easy to apply Lich Bane's Spellblade on both champions, and there's one other reason this setup works so well. Magic resist 
most items straight up suck. Yeah, Mercury Treads is still good, but that's about it. Extra Inker is meh. Banshee's Veil is still a little underwhelming. And Silver Mid Dawn, like, have any of you even seen this being built? So if you're an AP Assassin, guys, 11-7 is still looking super good with Night Harvester and the Bane, and we ain't talking the Dark Knight Rises. Now, ahead of the NH and LB, we have a bit more of a beefy setup that is the sole reason this champion has gone from bad tier to OP tier. Let's see if you can guess who this champion is, actually. So the item combination starts with Sunfire Ages and ends with Sterix Gage. Now, who on earth would build a tank mythic and then Hysterics instead of a thorn mail or something like that? Well, I'll tell you, Kled. And this is why Kled mains are enjoying close to a 53% win rate at the moment in high elo. That's in the top five. Now, Sunfire Ages used to be your go-to mythic on Kled before Rido nerfed it a couple of times in 1025. Well, in 11.6, the immolate damage was reverted to its former 12%, and you now get 20 ability haste. This means that in extended fights with other fighters and tanks in the top lane, you can compete. Because with Gore Drinker, you were lacking, compared to a Camille with Trinity Force or Darius with Dry Breaker. Well, now you have the tankiness you desperately need and more damage. Now, Ability Haste isn't the make or break stat on Kled, but you can't argue it's not useful. More cooldowns equals more trades, so the updated Sunfire Aegis has put Kled back on the map in a big way. And yes, their Gaze just adds to the tankiness, survivability, and damage as well. So, very strong combination here, guys. Now, this mythic item, guys, was one that got changed in 11.7, and despite getting nerfed, it is still performing at a very high click. So, for those of you playing a mage who don't rush Nash's Tooth and don't favor the Night Harvester and Lich Bane combo, well, here's a combo for you Everfrost and Cosmic Drive. This is still OP. So yes, Riot reverted your Glaciate damage back to what it was in 11.4 and increased its cooldown by 10 seconds, but you still throw out the root at the same speed. And yeah, the fact it still slows and roots, these are where the real value is stored, so it's still good. If you're an Ari, a Silas, a Lissandra, and a Nivea, honestly, you can make it work on most mages, no reason to panic. We've also got to remember that Everfrost gives you a bit more HP than it used to and builds out a Kindle gem now, so it's stronger and more convenient to build. Now, Cosmic Drive is an ideal complement because of the haste and movement speed, and we mentioned this with that crazy bar build. This means your cooldowns are up a lot quicker, and on a mobile mages like Nivea and Ryan's for example, the movement speed is a most welcome stat. With Glaciate, it makes it very hard for enemy champions to run at you and through you, so more often than not, you will be the one running through them. So Everfrost and the Dry are still very powerful in 11.7. Now just before we get into the three most powerful builds guys of 11.7, one last friendly reminder to check out the Game Week website. Aren't you tired of winning, then losing, then winning, then losing? Well it's time to bug that trend so you can start seeing victory on the wreck. So do yourself a favor and get signed up. I'm also uploading daily videos analyzing high elo gameplay, showing you what the best in the world do that you can also do. So get signed up, links down below. All right, the third best build on this countdown, guys. Well, the champion solo abusing this wasn't really talked about until this item combo was discovered. And since its discovery, Urgold has had one of, if not the highest win rate in the entire game. So your first investment is Titanic Hydra, and your next is Stride Breaker. This build is unreal, and you know why? Well, it's kind of similar to the Nash's Tooth Rush we looked at earlier, the on hit. Now, if you're scratching your head, you know, why would on hit be useful on Urgot? Well, Urgot's W guys boasts on hit, and you now max your purge because with Titanic's on hit from its cleave passive, you shred through your opponent's health bar. How many times did I say on hit there, by the way? Now, yes, right, did nerf your W's on hit, there it is again, in 11.6, but it's still a 50% effectiveness, which is more than enough to stomp lane and win game. And if any of you may know Urgot or have had to come up against the Dreadnought, tell me about your experience in the comments. Now, with Stride Breaker in there as well, guys, you really have no weakness. As I said, champions like Darius and Garen can get kited really easily without it. Well, same with Urgot. But once you have it, it's a completely different ball game. Combine this with your E and you have all the stickiness you need to obliterate the enemy squishes in 1v9. So start abusing this before Rito find out and nerf it. Now the second best build of 11.7, here we go. Well, if you're not a fan of Stride Breaker, I have another mythic based build for you. And guess what? This bad boy got buffed this patch. Now, how many of you have tested out the new Trinity Force? Let me know your thoughts on how it feels in the comments. And yes, this is the first major purchase of this build. And you want to add to it by buying a Ravenous Hydra. And for champions like Camilla and Wukong, this is just so oppressive and near impossible to beat. But like these two champions were good enough with the old TF. Now it's just too much. So instead of giving you attack speed, Trinity Force is now giving you more AD and a new mythic passive that contributes to a more rounded stat line. And this is great for champions that don't rely much on attack speed. Camilla and Wukong are two of them. The AD, the haste, and then you throw in the new threefold strike effects so that are now procs on towers, and you have another way of winning. You can still team fight, of course, and Camilla and Wukong are very good in that department, or you can stay splitting because your team is running it and win on your own. Now, Ravenous is the ideal follow-up item because of the AD, the haste, and the Omni Vamp, more damage, more cooldowns, more healing, and sustain. It's got everything you want and more, so if you want wins, in 11.7 guys, this build is very hard to beat. But I do have a build that beats it, in 11.7, and it revolves around a certain class of items, and then a major item that got buffed this patch, 
So if you're a fan of AD Assassins, keep on building whatever lethality items you're building in the early to mid game. Whether it's Dustblade or Prowler Score and that Serpent's Fang or Edge of Night, whatever it is, keep building. But after those first two items, here's what you're going to buy. The buffed Cyrilda's Grudge. This item completes you, legit, and now costs 200 less gold and you get so much from it. As you can see, the AD, the haste, and the passive slow are all incredibly valuable on an AD assassin, and then you have the armor penetration, and this is the real power. You see, most champions you go against guys will have armor in their build in some way. Whether it's a mage with Zonyas, or a tank with Thormail, or a support with Locket, or a fighter with Death Dance, or an AD carry with Guardian's Angel, like it's always going to be useful, no matter how squishy the enemy team is. And with lethality as good as it is too, and the Seeker's Arm Gardener from last patch, god I almost made it through an entire video about mentioning it, but this build is easily the standout of 11.7. So get around it guys and tell me in the comments about your experiences with any of the builds in this countdown. Thanks so much for watching, hit that sub button and the bell so you don't miss our next upload and until then, bye!